So we're back with Trent, uh, and Trent, this time we're going to answer more some injury questions, kind of return to play, sure. when is injury, an injury, when is injury, fake it till you make it, what is inconvenience, what is kind of something to be really cautious with, uh, and maybe cover also about braces, ankle yeah. braces, knee braces, when it's needed, when it's really not. Sure. So tell me first, um, Injury, so from the jam finger, take two weeks off to the, you know, more complex injuries such as ACL or um, maybe hip popping out of the yeah. place. There are different, I think, levels. Absolutely. So at which point as the coaches, as the parents, as an athletes, we actually ask for help and seek professional and at which point we go home we i said we go through a few days of right. inconvenience you know and I, I think there's uh two ends of the spectrum you have those that you know may have a very minor in injury and they're going to be put out for a while and then you have the other end of the spectrum where the kid's been injured for quite some time and they never take them out and so you know i think uh as most healthcare professionals they're trying to balance that um, and quite honestly, you know, a lot of it is around CYA. You want to protect yourself. You don't want to, you, you tend to uh, go more towards a conservative route. You know, for lower extremity injuries, you know, if you're having uh, significant pain, you know, and I would say four, four to five out of 10 pain, that's pretty significant. You should probably get that checked out. If you're having a lot of swelling, um, if it's altering the way that you walk, um, if you swell up after activity, or if your pain is progressively increasing over time. So I go to practice, I go to practice, my pain's like a two out of 10, I come out of practice, my pain's four out of 10, next time I come out, it's five out of 10, it's progressively increasing. Yeah. That tells me as a clinician that that is an injury that is progressively getting worse. Got it. You know, um, I tend to deal with a lot of athletes that don't wanna go out. And so, you know, working with our athletic training team and our physical therapists, we will typically go towards a conservative route, but also try to keep them in competition. Got it. Because the other thing that we do know about sports is that the longer you're out, the more likely you are not to go back. Got it. So with that being said, how do we, you know, we, we get the cleared? I am cleared, like let's say I got hurt, maybe I had either physical therapy for a few weeks or surgery, I'm cleared, so there is multiple levels to that. There is, how do I know what clear really means? And also I think there is that aspect how the athlete feels, yeah. so. So and you touched on yeah. a couple of great things. Let me step back for one second. And it, and it goes back to the injury piece, but it also goes back to being clear. I think it's really important for parents to understand there's a very big difference from going to an urgent care to going to a primary care physician who's sports medicine trained they're gonna have a very different perspective on an injury. A urgent care is gonna go a much more conservative route um, and it's gonna delay the process a lot longer. Whereas a primary care sports medicine or an orthopedic surgeon, they're gonna be on a more, more aggressive route. Um, as far as return to play, that's, that's really, you know, it's, it's funny because it's a huge topic in sports medicine right now is when is somebody really ready to return to play? First and foremost is that what we know from the literature is that you have to have some type of process to evaluate that person's ready to return to play. So one of the things that you mentioned is the psychology of it, okay? Um, it's a term, there's a term that we use called kinesiophobia. And all that simply means is fear of movement or fear of return to play. Is that, and this especially happens like after ACLs, um, or a shoulder dislocation is that they have a fear of going back to that sport because of the inability to perform one and two getting re-injured. So there, there are actually things that we do as athletic trainers, physical therapists and doctors that we can give to the athlete that will evaluate where they are psychologically. Gotcha. And what we know from the literature is that if they don't perform well on that test, then most likely when they go back, they're most likely gonna get injured because they're not gonna move the same because they're always fearful of going to that right. side. The other thing is that there needs to be a very clear, succinct order of tests to evaluate an athlete's return to play. 
So, and I know I mentioned this before, but making sure that you get with the right provider is really important. Got it. Because if, I, I've seen a lot of variants, and, and I, I get a little bit more of a, rather than a state perspective, more of a national perspective. And there's a lot of variance in how people evaluate an athlete's return to play. Right. The science is pretty clear on how we should be doing that. Um, although all the tests that we should be using are, is not clear, right. but there should be a succinct sequence of tests that they go through. So for example, I know that when I test you, your right side has to be within 90% of your left side. I know that if it's not like that, that you're at greater risk for a re-injury. Right. Okay, so let's say the athlete comes back in, and I, this happened to me, let's say after shoulder surgery, and I've got back and I'm doing well, and then suddenly there is a pain that appears to be like the pain that right. I had before, right. and then there is, of course, am I back to where right. I was? Even some days now, I wake up, I'm like, ooh, what did I do? Am I back hurt? Right. You know, because. I guess we have to understand that after the injury, there is not going to be always the smooth sailing probably for the rest of your life. You're going to have a good days and bad days and what are, then at that point, how do I again distinguish right. what is re-injured right. and what is just, hey, it's a rainy day, weather right. changed, temperature dropped, didn't sleep good. Well, so. and I, I think that there is, after an injury, there's more onus on the athlete. They have to own, they have to own their condition. Yeah. Unfortunately, after an injury, you've altered the mechanics. You've altered the original design of the tissue. Yep. It's never going to be the same. That's not. I don't mean that in a negative way. Right. Because you can play at the same level. You right. can you can uh, do all of your activities without pain, but you have to do something, especially as you're going back to play. Yep. So as you go back to play, you are going to get irritated. Heck, when I work out, I get sore. Okay. Yep. If I had a rotator cuff repair, I would have to ice my shoulder after that. So. Yep. As you go back to play, you're going to stress those tissues and you're going to be stressing them at a high level. So you have to make sure that you're diligent with your icing. You have to make sure you're diligent with doing your exercises that, that were prescribed for your return to play. Um, and you have to be diligent at paying attention to what's going on. Got it. Tell me this. With all that being said, and we talked about prevention and post and the braces as in the volleyball world I see it a lot a lot of people prescribe for a 12 year old yeah. who get on a team wear ankle braces because you're not going to roll your ankle and this is and I'm no no doctor yeah. nothing and I said well first of all the ankles are meant to roll that's my attitude on it they're gonna you can walk down the stairs right. and roll right. it you can be in a gym and roll right. it like it's right. a joint and we're standing on it so, and then they have, well, if you don't wear ankle brace, you can't be part of it. They have the mandatory that to where you're pressured into wearing an ankle brace on a healthy, developing 12-year-old, yet we didn't give them a calf raises, yep. we didn't give them the single leg jumps. So, and then I have to come in and break in, and it's like, well, I don't think you should wear brace. And then we get into that, well, they, okay, well, their coach said right. they should. Right. And I said they shouldn't. Right. So now we're in this position, and then three weeks later, the kid goes and rolls the ankle on a warm-up shuffling. I said, "Well, ankles are meant to roll; right. they will roll." I mean, and this is where I, this is where I, without any literature, find the brace is effective. If that's if I'm coming off the, let's say I roll my ankle, I'm coming off the injury. Hey, for a week or two. Like just getting over that fear right. of rolling it again. I have right. a support, sure, but at some point we gotta get out of it. Right. Even when I see one ankle in a brace, but the other one right. is not, I'm kind of like. So, you know, it's funny because you, you touched on a uh, little bit of pet peeve of mine, <laughs> and that is that is bracing healthy people. Right. Um, so let's let's first talk about the athlete who's been injured. You know, um, I rolled my ankle, I tore my ATF, which is your anterior talofibular ligament right. in your ankle, it's a common, common injury. A lot of times we'll use a lace-up brace with that. Right. Um, and I think that's important to support that tissue while it heals. If you're gonna be playing, it's important to support that tissue while it heals. But after it heals, what the studies show is that if I put a brace on your back, 
or I put a brace around your knee, what happens is that the EMG uh, activity of the muscles that support that joint decreases. Gotcha. So essentially, what the body is very efficient. So I put this strong support on, and my body senses that it's there, so it decreases the muscle activity to give that somewhere else. That being said, if I wear a knee brace all the time, I'm creating weakness around my knee. It's unfortunate. Same thing with your ankle, same thing with your low back. So when people take the, you know, originally braces were meant for uh, um, helping someone return back to play right. after an injury. They weren't meant to be a proactive case. Now that being said, there's, there's a lot of companies out there and in, it's a kind of a hot debate right now about how you should be using braces. Um, but what I will tell you is the literature shows you put a brace on, your EMG activity goes down. Got it. And what I know is the last thing I want to do is take that brace off of you then after you've been wearing it for 12 weeks, right. put you on the court and expect you to be able to perform right. at a high level. So in my opinion, I would say braces are good after an injury, but at some point I always get athletes out of braces. Okay. Now I've seen athletes who have two ACL braces on playing sport. And then you see them run down the field and they're doing this yeah. because they keep colliding their braces together. Right. Okay, so now what you've done is not only created weakness, but you completely altered their gait. And that to me is not a good thing. I right. mean, I always like to go back to what is the normal gait pattern? You know, what is the normal activity? You should be able to play sports without the brace. Got it. I don't know if that completely answered your that question, is, but. That is pretty good, I think. So let's go about healthy people. So. I know my stance on it. You're healthy. You've never had any problem. You're growing, developing. You're a twelve-year-old woman. Why are we bracing those kids? It, Mandatory. I'm talking. If you don't brace, you don't play. I had a lot of that in school. It's like a fear put in. If, literally, if you don't wear this brace, you can't play. That's the policy of the program. I would feel that if you did that, you're setting the kid up for failure. Okay, because they may not fail when they're playing for you, but when they go to another team and they're not wearing braces, or heaven outside. forbid they're outside walking and they step off a curb and they roll okay. their ankle, boom. Because why? Because you're creating weakness. I would much rather see a program that is focused on strengthening of the intrinsics of your foot, strengthening your uh, ankle stabilizers, doing single leg activities to create that stabilization, things like that. That is going to be much more effective than just putting somebody in a brace. Yes. But you know what? It takes more time. It takes it, more knowledge. Yes. That's the easy way out a lot. 